a lot of the guys we work with, especially with them being entrepreneurs, can fall into the trap of prioritizing everybody else. The selfless thing to do is to get out the door and go and have that little bit of time for myself. I might adjust it because then the better version of me shows up. And when they're at work, they feel guilty that and they want to be at home. When they're at home, they feel guilty that they should be at work. Yep. And it's just this never ending cycle. You can't just keep working and doing things for other people um, and feel good about yourself. It just doesn't work that way. Have you ever felt guilty taking time for yourself to do things that bring you joy? Today, we're going to talk about a crucial topic. That is, we're going to explore why guilt exists and how it holds men back from doing things for themselves that they really enjoy and the consequences that can have for them in their personal relationships, at home, at work, and how to break the cycle. Stewie G. Good morning. <laughs> how you doing? Good. Good, you? Yeah, I'm great. So um, just to give the listeners a quick insight, I know you've been on a few shows before, episodes of the TPM show, but you head up our client success team. Uh, you've been part of the team now for coming up three years, I think. Yep. Yep. Um, prior to that, you were involved in the movement probably for about three years as well. Mm. Yep. Uh, so all in all, you've been around the movement about six years. Quick snapshot, 30 seconds. Just let the, the guys listening know what brought you to the movement in the first place. So I came in the early days, before the days of the website and Facebook pages. Um, you gave me a lovely call. And um, ultimately, I was, I was struggling. Um, life was, on the face of it, really good. Um, but internally, I was just really not in a good place. Uh, I had everything on the surface that should have made me happy. Um, and yet, I was sad. Yeah, there was a lot of sadness. There was a lot of pain, a lot of anger. And, and a lot of things under the surface that I just don't, didn't understand. Um, and that was starting to impact on my marriage, my relationship with my kids. And yeah, what I slowly started to learn was that you know, under the surface, I just didn't really like myself. Um, so it's mm. been a, a number of years of exploring and underpicking why that was. Fortunately, we do not, we cannot say that is the case today. It's true. Uh, mm. Which is a beautiful journey you've been on. Very inspiring. Um, well done, brother. It's You've had some uh, battle scars along the way, but you've stuck at it and it's paid off. So anyway, <clears throat> let's dive into this idea of guilt. Um, obviously, you're very close with the men. You spend a lot of time with them. You speak with them. I'm curious, do you see this coming up for them? Yes. Yeah, it's it's a daily thing. It's a daily mm. thing. Um, and not just men in the movement, men that you see randomly in Facebook or Twitter or people that you don't even know popping up. Um, mm. Seen it with friends, seen it with really close people who are close to me. Um, which is why one of the first things we talk to the guys about is filling their own cup and a keystone mm. habit. You know, what can we do just to slightly change that, um, change that narrative from being so attached usually to their wives, to mm. the validation, um, mm -hmm. and feeling like they can't do something for themselves. For themselves. Yeah, I would definitely agree. I think, you know, a lot of the guys we work with, especially with them being entrepreneurs, can fall into the trap of prioritizing everybody else. Yeah. All right. Uh, they get so used to sacrificing themselves in order to grow the business that, in my experience, their perseverance goes from being a strength to becoming a weakness. And as a result, they dig in and they just grind it out. And in the process, as I've said, take care of everybody else except for themselves. Because they're not taking care of the people at work. They're straight away going home to then want to be with the wife and kids, which I get. But then they wake up and the cycle just continues. And when they're at work, they feel guilty that and they want to be at home. When they're at home, they feel guilty that they should be at work. Yep. And it's just this never ending cycle that they really can't get away from. And as a result, the idea of them doing something for themselves, um, a common objection they give me, which I believe is a total story. Uh, I just don't have time. I don't have time to make any time for myself. And it's like, really? Like, if you were to take an hour out this morning, and I'm thinking of one person in particular, um, a dear friend of mine. <clears throat> I've said to him many times, look, if you were to take an hour or two out this morning or do something you love, be it paddleboarding or whatever, the business isn't going to burn down. Mm. Like, things are not going to fall to the ground. So logically, it's possible 
But for so many guys, they feel as though it's such a difficult task yeah. because even the idea of them going and taking that two hours for themselves or whatever, because of so many of the things they feel like they're behind on and they could do, like spending time with the kids or the wife or whatever, even enjoying that two-hour block paddleboarding becomes really tough. Yeah, they just constantly think about what they should be doing and not fully present. Mm. Yeah, it's what it's one of the most common lines or things I will say to some people is just to challenge. You know, are you? Is there a difference, or what is the difference between being selfish and selfless? Because mm, people think, oh, I'm going to do this for myself. I'm going to go and do it, and that's being really selfish. And quite often, the wife might tell them they're being selfish because they're at work and they're not actually there some of the time. And for me, the big thing, for my for my example, my decompression at the end of the day. The easiest thing for me to do would be to usually dive in with Claire and the kids because that time's tough and the kids are kicking mm. off and Claire needs some help. And sometimes I will, but I also know usually that the selfless thing to do is to get out the door and go and have that little bit of time for myself. I might adjust it because then the better version of me shows up. If I'm not grounded, if my cup isn't full, if I'm not doing things for myself, then you know it can go from anywhere from being reactive to be to almost to be kind of being resent, having some resentment. Mm. Um, you can't just keep working and doing things for other people um, and feel good about yourself. It just doesn't work that way. Mm. Yeah. Do you know what? I'm just looking at some of the, the research here that we did for the show and there's three main points uh, that we, that we kind of touched on when we were looking at understanding the guilt of self-care. And the first one was societal expectations and conditioning. Uh, the idea that many men are <laughs> conditioned to prioritize others and view self-care as selfish, mm -hmm. to your point, right? The other one is the role of family and upbringing. You know, family expectations and upbringing play a significant role. I know a lot of guys that I speak with were made to feel guilty as a kid. Like guilt was used as a bit of a bargaining tool, yeah. especially if the parents were separated. Um, and let's say as a child, the guy wanted to go and see his father. The mother may say, oh, go on then, you know, you just just i guess i'll just stay here alone you know you go over and see him but even that one line right impacts a kid and makes a kid feel very guilty about wanting to go and spend time with someone they love and the third one is internalized beliefs and self-worth yeah you know actually believing that your worth uh, the trap for a lot of guys believing the worth is tied to their ability to provide and care for others which can therefore make self-care seem as though it's undeserved yep. and again lead to guilt. That was that was one of the bigger ones for me when I when I had my own business and that I see in a lot of business owners is they have the idea that if I work really hard and I build the business up and I provide, then it gives them the validation, it makes them happy. So they do more of that. And I think a lot of the time as well, particularly in relationships, they think, oh, okay, if, if I do this, it's going to make my wife happy. It's going to give her what she needs. Not realizing at the time that actually not doing them for themselves means that they're just completely relying on either the business or their wife to make them feel good, make them feel happy. So it can put an awful lot of pressure on the wives or the family without realizing it. Mm. Um, and yeah, for me, it was, you know, my upbringing was one where there was, it was the family unit and we were expected to do everything together. And my parents, you know, they're a little bit older, but they, they didn't really have their own hobbies. They didn't really have their own things. So it was either in the home together or in church together but there was, they didn't have their own lives. Mm. And for a long time, when, when I first, first started with, with seeing Claire, when we started dating, um, the great thing was that from the outset, we did our own thing. So it was really, really important. We had our time together, but it was also very clear, no, I'm going to go and do my thing. Mm. You're going to go and do yours. And that, for us, made us stronger. And we've seen an awful lot of people that have done the opposite. Oh, I met my wife. That's it. I'll stop doing all the things I used to do. Oh, I used to play golf. Oh, I used to ride my bike. Oh, I used to do such and such. Mm. It's like, well, why did you stop? And and people will do, and there's very rarely an answer for that. It's, as you say, it's an expectation. It's an unwritten rule that, well, I thought that's what you were expected to do. Mm. Not realizing that actually it's probably causing more damage than, than good. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the resentment that builds, um, the unconscious conditioning that occurs by making, we did a Mark and I, uh, Hensworth, uh, the last episode recorded um, a show on, the importance of keeping friendships, male friends, mm. as you get older. Mm. And one of the pitfalls of not doing that was the idea that you then make your wife your best friend, which, yeah. you know, done in a healthy way is a very powerful thing to do in a relationship. Yeah. But done unconsciously and in an unhealthy way, place an incredible burden on her 
to provide you with needs that you are not meeting for yourself. Yeah. And when those needs then aren't met, it's very easy for men to fall into the trap of then resenting their wife or even becoming needy and asking for things, asking to spend time together, asking for sex, asking for whatever it may be. Yeah. And that wasn't the guy that the wife fell in love with in the beginning. Yeah, they started almost confusing their wife with their mom. 100%. So, so much, so much you know, 100%. One of the most popular episodes we've done is, are you making your mother, are you making your lover your mother? Yeah. And they do. And it's not easy, Mike. Claire is my best friend. Like, she is my best friend. We spe we, 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 we genuinely love spending time with each other, which is great because that's not always the case with a lot of marriages. And we do our own thing. I have mm -hmm. my own friends. I come here and, and, and spend some time before the team retreat and the leadership days to spend time with other friends. I go to football games. I, I, I do my own thing as well. It, it's, it doesn't mean it's the wrong thing to do. It doesn't mean it's easy. And obviously we talk about shit tests and the fact that sometimes you might be challenged around it. Um, but it's important to do it. And, and for a mm -hmm. man to do it as well, to be very clear about, um, you know, it starts with, with, it starts with good discussion and communication, funnily enough. But for us, it's very, very clear. This is the time we spend together. And these are things I'm going to go and do for myself. And that makes us more connected. It makes mm -hmm. us appreciate the time together. It adds quality to the time we have together. Um, I'm away for, away for 10 days at the moment. It's the longest I'm ever going to be away for. And it just means that you appreciate it a little bit more. Mm. You're together all the time. It, it builds resentment. It because you lose sight of what you got together for in the first place. You stop Big dating time. your wife. Big time. And, you know, one thing that, you know, our listeners are very good at is giving, 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 right? Uh, within that, you know, there are some pitfalls. They do form a lot of unconscious, you know, covert contracts because they give and give and give expecting something in return without ever communicating it. But they expect something in return because you can only give so much without getting something in return. You know, inevitably the well is going to run dry, right? Yeah. So uh, covert contracts for me was almost a new expression a couple of years ago. And I didn't realize, well, you don't, I didn't realize I was doing it. Um, not as much now, but but certainly in, back in the days when when I was really I didn't kind of know who I was or what I was. And, and that's what I did. I would, I would give and give and give. And I sort of almost said that I, I love giving to people and doing things for people, but I didn't realize why I was doing that. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, I wanted to interrupt this episode because it's dawned on me that many of you guys aren't aware that we actually have a book on how to save your marriage without talking about it. Now, thousands of men have read it and they've reviewed it. And I want to give you the opportunity to do the same. If you're interested in grabbing it, it's a short read, but it's helped a lot of men just like you. And maybe you're not interested in the activation method yet, but this is a small entry point that can really turn things around for you. Go over on Amazon. We have it priced as cheap as Amazon will let us. And that way you have a resource that you can use right now to start getting some results in your marriage. Now let's get back to the episode. I do it and I do enjoy it. It's one of our love languages. But what the main, re main reason I was doing was so that they like me. Mm-hmm. And I can see the same patterns in my daughter now. You know, she's trying to figure herself out and she's doing things for people in the hope that they will like her, that they'll become friends with her. And yeah, you, you, you're unconsciously doing something, trying to, get, trying to get an outcome without even realizing it and without communicating it as well. So here's a question. What has been the ripple effect within your family of you letting go of guilt and prioritizing doing things for yourself? Well, the easiest one is I think my marriage is one of the strongest that, that's out there. Um, I've seen, as I say, lots of guys come into the movement and the most common thing is they've, you know, they've stopped doing what they used to do. They've stopped dating the wife. They've stopped prioritizing or they spend all their time together and they're, they're wondering why the polarity is not there. So my marriage is in the best place it's ever been. And it's, you know, I'm very lucky that it's probably an enviable one to, to have. Um, but then you're, you're also showing things for you, for your kids. So for me, like Ava and Isla, they know that dad goes and does his thing. He goes and does it. He comes back. There's usually a present involved, so they quite enjoy it. But they know that we, they've, they've seen what healthy boundaries and a healthy relationship looks like, in my opinion. So the hope for me is that as Ava's trying to figure out, she goes to high school now and she tries to figure out friendships, these, these, these lessons will stick. But then when they're looking for their partners, whoever that may be, they, they, they go in with an expectation of, well, look what worked for mum and dad. Look at what they've modeled for us. Look how healthy things are between them. And then when we hand, when conflict does come up, look at how well they handle it. It's, it's dealt with really quickly and usually by going off and doing our own, doing our own thing.
mm. taking that time and not feeling guilty about it and having to fix it. No, I'm just going to go and take some time for myself because it's the right thing to do. Mm. And then come back and be calm and communicate it. So I'm hoping it's just, as you know, with me, it's trying to change some generational patterns. So for me, that's the, the, the hope is that my kids grow up knowing what a healthy relationship looks like and they don't feel guilty about having time for themselves and having their own lives. Mm, great point. You know, I think there are some really powerful reframes here when we think about guilt and doing things for yourself, whatever it may be. Whatever you choose to do for yourself is self-care, right? And, you know, there's been a lot of evidence in the world over the past few years about the lack of self-care and the impact that's having on people, be it in the workplace, be it in society, wherever it may be, right? And I think there are a few reframes as well we can we can offer the guys because you know, the guys often think, okay, well, I'm going to be selfless and I'm not going to do something for myself because I'm going to invest into the family. Well, in actual fact, you choosing to avoid overcoming the guilt is actually one of the most selfish things you can do because all you're doing in that process is robbing the people around you of getting the best of you because there's no possible way they can get the best of you if you're not doing some, something for yourself. Instead of getting the best of you, they're going to get the rest of you. And there's no way you can parent the best you can possibly parent, lead the best you can possibly lead, hold space the best you could hold space for your wife. Yeah. Like it's absolutely crucial for the people around you to get the best of you. Yeah. And I'm not talking about some perfect scenario here where you always bring 100% of your best self. Mm. You know, it could even be like your decompression. End of your day, you just take a 10 minute walk for yourself. Mm. And within that, you may go to your favorite place and you may watch the sunset and you may just enjoy the sounds of the birds and the stillness. Or you may even go to a cold plunge, whatever it may be. Mm. I think just that, that action of pushing away the guilt, overcoming the stories and doing something for yourself signals the feedback loop that gives yourself is incredibly important because subconsciously what that does is it signals to yourself that I matter to me. Mm. And the self-esteem and the self-confidence that comes from that because the reality is only you know, right? Yeah, only you know when usually, you do the things. It's usually a quiet you don't confidence do them. as well that you're trying to, that you develop. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. For me, there's there's two things on this. One, there's the long term. So you talked about guilt and, and and passing that on, and that's what I was doing for for many years before I did the work that I'm still doing on myself. Um, and that builds awareness. So the long term, you're trying to build awareness of for, for me of when these things come up because they're still going to come up for you. These things are still going to happen if it's inbuilt into you. And the way that shows up for me in the short term typically is if I don't do something for myself, if I've missed the gym for two or three days, if I've not been out in the morning, exactly what I'll do is I will show up and pass some of that guilt on. So the way I'll handle conflict with Claire or with my kids is I will make them feel guilty for what's happened rather than be able to take a step back and be calm and just take it for what it is, you know, start making up stories and, 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 I get dragged into the old version of myself rather than be able to step back and go, it's nothing to do with me. They just need me to be calm. They just need dad to show up and, and deal with it instead of making it worse. That's the big difference for me. If guilt kicks into it, I make the situation worse, not better. So that comes by being selfless to an extent. And we're not saying take five hours a day for yourself, but doing whatever it takes so that you drop into that space rather than being triggered and adding to the problems. Mm, 100%. The three practical strategies that we uh, landed on when we were looking at this. First one is refer reframing self-care, which is kind of what we're talking about, right? The, the importance of self-care actually being an investment, an investment that you can get a return on investment from, right? Whether it's an, a return on investment with your wife and kids, mm -hmm. whether it's with your staff, whatever, it's got to be done. Second one was around the need to set boundaries and communicate needs. You know, some some of the guys listening to this may have questions about that because I get it, depending on the position your relationship's in, we talk a lot about the emotional bank account. If that bank account is overdrawn, then it's not a great place to try and set a boundary from. You don't really yeah. have enough of a, a balance to be able to say, hey, this is what I need 
this is why it's important for me and what it provides me with. Mm. And I'm going to be doing this thing. How can we make that work? Yeah. So if you are in that position, guys, and you know, you just need to make sure you make some healthy deposits so that into that bank account, you know, hidden motives technique. But at the same time, as I'm saying this, I'm, I'm, I've got a little bit of a, a battle going on within me because I see the benefit that the guys experience from doing the alpha rise and shine, which is an example of everything we're talking about. Yep. Right. And it's a, it's a requirement and for the for the men that go through the program to get that in place. Mm -hmm. And we see tremendous results really quickly yeah, from huge. the men that do that. <clears throat> so there can be balances within that. I think there can be non-negotiables, alpha rise and shine. You could get up earlier before the rest yeah. of your house gets up, get out, be back. And there might be other things you might need want to do for yourself throughout the week. Like you you go you go and play golf, don't you? Um, right. that would require, <laughs> that would require more of the boundaries piece. So that's where you got to make sure those deposits are nice and healthy in the account. Cause you know, yeah. if you're going to play golf on a Sunday, there's, there's a, again, there's a difference with between selfless and selfish. And for some of the guys, if you've been selfish, if you've done taken a ton of, your, ton of time for yourself and never shown up, it's probably not the right time to say, I need some more. Um, maybe you need to make some adjustments. What works for me personally very well is I have a few different versions now. So I've been playing around with it. So it doesn't have to be prescribed. So I have things that work for me, particularly in the morning and the evening. I don't want to have time for myself, but I can, I can play around with that to fit in with what's happening at home as well. Mm -hmm. So would I leave the house? Would I go and do something selfishly if all, if all hell was breaking loose or things were struggling? Of course I wouldn't. So you've, you've got to, you know, you can't just say I'm doing it regardless because it's what I need. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you've got to learn that, that or the example I gave about after work, I might have worked till eight, nine o'clock at night. And what I really want to do is just go and chill out. Well, the best thing to do is still go out there and have that bit of time for myself. So they get the best version of me. So for me, that's what it's all about is the, to make sure that the best version of me shows up. Yeah, I agree. Um, there's a really good book. It's not directly related to guilt, but um, Nathaniel Brandon, mm. The Six Pillars of Self-Esteem. Again, brilliant book based a lot in the, in the science of self-esteem. And uh, one of the things that <clears throat> I love to say is, you know, the fastest way to build confidence is to make and keep promises to yourself. Equally, the fastest way to break, com uh, lose confidence is to make and break promises to yourself. And the, the truth with that is that you're the only one who knows whether or not you're making or breaking promises to yourself. Can't lie to yourself. No. So if you allow gr guilt to creep in, and you continually deny doing something for yourself, even though you know the truth, because you know deep down that you want to do something for yourself, and you probably say, all right, well, you know, I'll do this for myself this week. And when you don't, because of the guilt, that has a huge impact on your self-image and your self-esteem. Yep. You lose trust in yourself. You feel bad, to your point. It's very easy to then take that out on the people you love, be at home, be at work, and everything just becomes a lot harder. Yeah, it starts a cycle. So, so my, I've got a personal trainer. She would laugh at this as well because she, I'm, I'm, I'm all or nothing. And if a lot of guys are similar, you get onto that, you get into a cycle that's a good one and it just builds and builds and things become easy and you get into flow and everything just, everything just seems easy. And that usually starts with filling the promises to yourself. And, and for me, communicating it really clearly to Claire, well, this is why I'm doing it and why. So she's on board. She becomes a fan. The opposite of that is what you've just described. You don't do the things that you should be doing or you don't communicate what you're doing and then you feel guilty for not doing it. And round and round you go, all of a sudden your routine slip because you're trying to catch up and you're out of flow and then you start reacting to people. So it's, it's, it's not something that can be done overnight. It's 1% it's better every day, but equally point, yeah. you do the opposite. It can go 1% the wrong way. So it's, again, mm. it's the awareness and catching it and not letting it go too far. Mm. Again, when I was researching this, I was reading up on, on it and I came, I came across a really cool metaphor. And obviously we've spoke to the men about the idea that, you know, putting on the oxygen mask and all that stuff. But I really like this one. It says, um, think of self-care like sharpening an axe. By taking time to sharpen the blade, you can work more effectively and efficiently rather than struggling with a dull tool. I love that. Yeah. Yep. I love that. It's a great way of putting it. It really is like sharpening the axe. And every time you sharpen it, it maintains that effectiveness. Yeah. And you're able to just continue to get more out with less effort. Yeah, definitely. And that's, I think that's the challenge when we, we have guys who come into the activation method 
Um, typically, the house is on fire. There's a big problem to solve. And a lot of them are looking for the silver bullet. They, they got great. I've, kind of, I've seen that this works for, for, for hundreds of guys, thousands of guys. I want to do it. And they're expecting results immediately. And, and, and that can be the challenge is that they're trying to fix or, or, or solve problems and expecting it to happen in a few weeks. And that's just not going to happen. The, the, the bank balance is empty. Mm-hmm. They haven't sharpened the ax yet. They haven't worked out what to do. So it's got to be a, it's got to be a commitment to a lifelong process. We, sh- you know, we get some very quick results because for a lot of these guys, they've just not shown up at all. So doing mm-hmm. something different is huge. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a case of finding what works for you, sharpening that ax, and it becomes easier. It becomes mm-hmm. easier over time. Real point. So let's leave uh, the listeners with three action steps. From me personally, um, based on the guys we've seen, number one is how, gain some awareness about where you're at. You know, is this an issue for you? Um, have you actually dug into why that might be and start to get a bit of awareness around it? I think the second thing is if you're not doing for something for yourself, try. Um, figure out something that's going to work for you. Obviously, we've got techniques that work around you know, alpha rise and shine, alpha decompression. Um, but figure out something that might work for you to give something back. What about the third one? I'll let you give a third one. I think practicing self-compassion is really important. I think the inner talk for a lot of men is very negative, um, beats themselves up. And I think that they've used that to drive themselves in, in business Driven by and pain. yeah, they've been pushed by pain and they have, it's produced results in their life. Right. And that's rare because it'll beat some people down, but for our guys, it tends to spur them on and lift them up. However, every strength can become a weakness. And if you don't change that in a dialogue and in doing so, give yourself some self-compassion and remind yourself that it's okay to take time for yourself and that it isn't selfish and that you deserve it and that the people around you are better for it. And your wife probably wants you to. And they, they all <laughs> want you to, right? Um, but without, without changing that in a dialogue, it's going to be very hard to break the cycle. Uh, but in changing it, that's where you are a little bit more compassionate with yourself, a little bit more understanding, a little bit easier. And all of that is a way to give yourself a bit of self-love. Yeah, and again, I keep going back to that internal dialogue because I don't think that guys get this enough. When you talk to yourself in a healthy way, like we've just described, the internal feedback loop is, I matter to me. Once you actually understand the, the, the richness of that and the value of that and how that produces results in your life, it's invaluable. Yeah. Everything becomes lighter. Very, very. Oh, good. for sure. So guys, you heard it from the man himself, Mr. Stewie G. Um, if you're experiencing any guilt around doing things for yourself, lean into it. The people you love at home, at work, they want to get the best of you, not the rest of you. And that starts with you deciding and choosing to take some action. So as Dougie Fresh likes to say, a moment of insight, take massive action. We'll see you next time on the TPM show.